your Mac as a media center. In this video, we'll take a quick look at the new QuickTime Player in Snow Leopard. Now, there are quite a few improvements in QuickTime Player. Let's take a look at some of them. I'll go ahead here and open up my SL04 Lessons folder, and then I'll double-click this file, Big Buck Bunny 640x360.mov, or QuickTime Movie file. Of course, MOV is the traditional QuickTime Movie extension. When I double-click the movie, I'll go ahead and close my lesson folder. And the first thing we're going to see here is the new interface in QuickTime Player. So at the very bottom, we have our player inside of our movie. Now, this is a departure from previous versions of QuickTime Player in which the player was actually below our movie here. In addition, this player is movable. So I can click and drag the mover to the top of the screen and move it anywhere I'd like. And once I press play, my movie begins to play. Now again, the large difference here is if I take my cursor off the screen, all the interface for the QuickTime player disappears and I'm simply left with my movie. Now I can go ahead and use keyboard controls like the spacebar, and this will pause the movie and I get my UI back. Now besides this radical difference, we have familiar controls here in QuickTime Player. So I have my volume control, the ability to seek through the movie. Pressing fast forward will allow me to fast forward the movie. So when I click once, that's going at twice the speed. If I click twice, it's going four times. And again, if I press the pause button, that will pause. At any given point, I can also throw the movie into full screen by clicking on this button here. To return to my standard view, I'll press the escape key, and I'm back in my player. Another new feature in QuickTime Player is the ability to export this movie in a number of different ways. Here to the left of my full screen icon, I have this icon, which allows me to share my movie. I'll click on the icon, and you'll see I have a few options here. iTunes, Mobile Me Gallery, YouTube, and Trim. Let's just look at Trim for a moment here, although we won't be making any edits. Trim allows me to create basic edits in a movie. So for example, if I click and drag this yellow slider to the left, this defines the first frame. If I click and drag this handle to the right, this creates the end frame. And of course, now I would have a new movie. If I clicked Trim, it would create a shorter movie, and then I'm good to go. However, for now, I'll click Cancel. Let's go back to this icon and look at these options. So Share to iTunes, Share to Mobile Me Gallery, and Share to YouTube. We'll just look at Share to iTunes for now. I'll click on this option, and you can see that I have three options. Now, in my case, I cannot save to these larger versions. Why? Because the original file is too small. However, I can downsize or downsample this movie so that it's compatible with the iPhone and iPod. We'll go ahead and do that now by clicking Share, and the Export Progress window appears. We'll go ahead and edit this out, and then we can see what happens once this movie has been exported. Okay, once the movie has been exported, we'll take a look at iTunes. We'll go into iTunes by clicking here in the dock. We can see that our movie has been automatically added to the iTunes library. And if I go ahead and press View, Full Screen, you'll see that that movie now launches in full screen. And if I press Play, it'll begin to play. Notice here in iTunes that we have a similar controller as the one in QuickTime Player. What does this tell us? This tells us that QuickTime Player and iTunes have become more integrated in Snow Leopard, and both are well-suited to playing all your media, including movies.